Yes, welcome along to Good Morning Cheltenham for day two of the festival. And it's fair to say, we've had better Wednesday mornings. The cross country is off. It's gone. No cross country this year. Holy God, what are we going to do? And John Bon is out of the champion chase. What a way to start the show. But hopefully, we will cheer you up with plenty of winners on Wednesday's champion chase day. And joining myself, David Jennings. On the show today is Mr. Paddy Power himself. We brought in the big gun to cheer us up. Bad news, bad morning. He said, you know what we'll do? And the third, Get third bit bad news is I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, come to the trees, Paddy. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Astro looks, look what we can do. It's out of our control, right? And to be fair, you wouldn't be fancy jump on anyway, the way the Henderson horses ran yesterday. So Absolutely not. And we've got Maddie Player, Graham Rodway and Tom Nugent, who's going to be giving away €100,000 in the Paddy Power account. But more about that in a moment. Graham Rodway... <laughs> Great for you to join us on today of all days because we know you like a big statement, we know you like the big one, and you are taking on El Fabiolo today. Yeah, I can't wait to get stuck into El Fabiolo today, DJ. Against him. Uh, yeah, get stuck in against, against him. Yeah, against sorry, him. you think I was going to back him then? No, no, no. I want to be against him. Yeah, I'm desperate to take him on. I've been waiting for for his whole career for him to get like a proper test where he gets horse and really goes out there, puts him to the sword, puts that jump in under pressure because he just comes down a little bit steeply to my eye. I reckon we're going to get Ed, Edward Stone doing that today. The way that he ran last time at Newbury went blasting out from the front like an absolute nutcase, didn't he? And he thought, oh, there's no way going to keep this up and then he just ground them all into submission up the street we're still on the bridle when the horse that was second fell at the second last i reckon there's a real good chance that he's going to really put it up to el fabiolo this afternoon there we go he's almost started this morning like alpha or like uh, edward so will in the champion chase you're almost jumping i can't wait there. you know there's never a bad morning when it's Cheltenham, DJ. Come on, I know we started the day with uh, bad news, but it's still the Cheltenham Festival, isn't it? Come on, man. And we do have some good news for you. If you have had a bet with Paddy Power in the cross-country chase, anti-post or even after declarations, they will be refunding your money. So there you go. You get your money back with Paddy Power if you've had a bet in the cross-country chase. So there is some consolation. Tom Nugent, we are giving away a load of cash this morning once again. We're going to cheer everybody up. Indeed, DJ. Uh, Finders Keepers is back, giving away up to 100 grand in cash across 10 Paddy Power accounts. Uh, we'll be doing two drops across the show. The first timer is lined up. We'll be dropping five grand into 10 different Paddy Power accounts. We're going to start the timer, I think, right about now, getting the money in. You've got 15 minutes to log into your Paddy Power account. If you find five grand in there, it's not a glitch. It's finders keepers. All you have to do to keep the money is have a small bet or take it out, withdraw it, and the money is yours to keep it. You need to log in and check if the money is there. So come back to me in a moment, DJ, and we'll have more information. We've had four winners already this week on finders keepers. Yes, four. Let's get that up. Let's see if we double it. Let's see if we get eight today. If you are a Paddy Power account holder, log into your account, and there might just be five grand there for you. So have a look, and we will be, we will be revealing locations and names in just a moment so here's what's coming up on this morning's show we turned up says willie mullins after stateman does win his ninth grade one and wins a first champion hurdle first champion hurdle for paul townend as well how good was he would he have beaten constitution hill would he have beaten lossy mouth if lossy mouth ran the champion hurdle yesterday we'll get the views of the panel it's a bally burn up after slade steel was so impressive in yesterday's supreme novice hurdle is it just a penalty kick for bally burn he's going to be in all your multiples and the fab factor with John Bond out, it does look like it's a straightforward assignment for El Fabiolo in the champion chase. And we've got our charity bets later on the show. And there was one winning charity bet yesterday. Yes, we will find out who that was later on in the show. So Paddy, we'll kick off with you in a review of yesterday. Um, a punter's day rather than a bookies day. So hard luck. Ah, look, Jesus, there wouldn't be, there'd be no violins playing for the bookies. We make enough bloody money during the year. It's okay, especially on day one of a festival, you know. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it was one of those days. When you look at the results, you're kind of going, Jesus, how did I not make money today? Do you know what I mean? It was, there was a few very backable ones. Obviously, people might have got their fingers burned with, uh, with Tully Hill in the first race. And, uh, but then the mug double happened. You know, I was glad to be part of that myself, the, the two shorties. 
backed that one at about six to four, which is great. You know, that's a, that's a nice one to get you to get you off and running. And then, uh, and obviously Corbett's cross at the end looked like it was a bit weak in the market, but right at the death yeah. they plunged, didn't they? And uh, and he went off. Like he went off fifteen to eight. He went off fifteen yeah. to eight, and, and literally as they were lining up, he was nine to four. Yeah, there was just a proper plunge, just really late. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, they were like it was yeah, it was one of those days. And also getting the getting a favourite in the last race is key, especially at the track because people are a bit more, you know. I guess a bit looser at that stage, and you know, like you know, get your er losers early, winners late is a great motto, I think, going like racing, that. you know. And uh, and it was one of those days that did help because it was obviously a bit of a dampener, especially anyone who drove <laughs> the probably car that we drove by still a, there, a lot of abandoned cars. In the car we have a lot of viewers this morning who are still in the car park yeah. at Cheltenham yeah. trying yeah, to get yeah. out, muck from head to toe. Yeah. So yeah. our commiserations. But uh, yeah, so one of those days. I mean, look, it was obviously state state man winning the champion hurdle. We talk about that in a minute, I guess. That was uh, you know um, a very kind of. Well, let's talk efficient. about it now. Let's talk about it now. Was it brilliance or was it pure grit and determination? What won him the race? Oh, I think Paul Townend just rode his own race mm. and rode rode like the best horse in the race and just did, did enough and just said, I'm not going to give this horse. Like, I mean, I, I think he could have won much easier if he wanted to. And maybe that's what the crowd kind of was demanding because it was probably a tiny bit subdued, the, the welcome he got, a, welcome, welcome in. Mm. But uh, I thought he just it was relatively comfortable and he just kind of, he wasn't, he felt like he wasn't even in a race until just around the last hurdle and then he just went on and did, did what he needed to do you know right maddie play my question to you is a tough one okay. it's a tough one let's pretend yesterday that lossie mate there was no mayor's hurdle it was like the cross country was cancelled okay let's pretend lossie mate was in yesterday's champion hurdle she was getting seven pound from statement would she have won the 2024 champion hurdle yeah that was emphatic <laughs> yeah i think so um statement look he's so professional and it's hard to know where his ceiling is because he only ever really seems to do enough i think he's got more professional with his racing and that's why he's sort of this underdog isn't it but he shouldn't be because he's won nine grade ones now is it remarkable um but yeah i thought lossy mouth initially when i watched the race i was almost expecting her to win by further but then i think if you go and analyze it again it was kind of muddling in the closing stages. I couldn't see where she was on course. Um, and she had to sort of switch to the inside and then go in between horses. And ultimately, I thought she came away really impressively. I think two miles is probably her trip. Paul Townend said it himself afterwards. You mm -hmm. know, she's a champion hurdle mare. So who am I to, to doubt him? And the weight allowance is key, isn't it? Seven pounds for Lossy Mouth off State Man. I know who I'd rather back in the race anyway. Okay, so Lassie Mate, maybe. Lassie Mate is your 2025 champion hurdle winner and Tom Nugent. We've got some locations. We do indeed, DJ. We've got uh, five grand, <coughs> excuse me, in 10 different Paddy Power accounts and they are across Brighton, Edinburgh, Belfast, Sunderland, Ballymoney, Kilcullen, Dublin, Cork, Limerick and Letterkenny. So if you are in or if you know of anybody in any of these places, make sure they're checking their Paddy Power account because there's five grand in cash in there. If you or they find it, all you have to do is have a small bet or withdraw some of it and you get to keep it all. It's called Finders Keepers. That's the reason behind it. I know one man who lives in Kilcullen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Paddy Power's best friend. <coughs> who? Ruby Walsh. Yeah. So maybe Ruby Walsh is amongst the winners this morning. Oh, that wouldn't be bad. Steward's that Inquiry. Would be a great Steward's look, Inquiry. Maybe. No, that'll be a bad look. Terrible looking fact. Thumbs up, Ruby. And, and it wouldn't have lasted yeah. five minutes to be gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Graham Rodway, are we not giving Statement enough credit? Is he just an incredible <laughs> racehorse who might be Constitution Hill someday? And we will be saying he was better than Hurricane Fly. He is one of the greatest hurdlers of all time. I don't think we're ever going to get to that point with him, DJ, but he's a very reliable, solid, uh, lovable performer, isn't he, I think? Um, and you can't knock all who just keeps turning up, doing the business quite comfortably, doesn't he, as well, in grade ones. He's won more grade ones than Constitution Hill. However, I must admit, as they cross the line, I couldn't help but imagine Constitution Hill would have been five or six lengths ahead of that lot and that would have been the race for second had he been running. Um, so he's that kind of horse, isn't he? I mean, he's... He just falls below the absolute hurricane flies and the Constitution Hills and they're all great to the game. But What does he need to do to get there? Uh, well, he needs to beat Constitution Hill, doesn't he? Which is a start, would be a start. It's a shame that Constitution Hill didn't run, isn't it? Um, maybe we'll get that clash next season with any luck. Um, and if he can go and do that or, 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 or another contender emerges, a real top class one, not sure we saw one in the Supreme yesterday. I'd Slade still was good, but he's already been fresh by Ballyburn, hasn't he? So you wouldn't say that he's an outstanding novice hurdler coming through. But maybe we'll get one today, DJ, won't we? Ballyburn in the first. Yeah, but he'll probably go chasing. 
Maybe. It's a, it's a funny thing to say about State Man for a horse who's won a county off a of featherweight and then won a champion hurdle, been second in the champion hurdle. But is Cheltenham not his perfect track? I mean, it wasn't Hurricane Fly's perfect mm -hmm. track either. And I wonder whether in an ideal world, you know, he'd be better elsewhere. Well, William Mullen said that after the race, he thinks he's a better horse around Leprosan and Punchstown. But I, I thought he was well. I thought if you back State Man yesterday, you were never really too no. bothered. Like, I think he was he was emphatic. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot now, okay? We didn't discuss this beforehand, but one horse that ran yesterday, okay? Possibly be better if it was beaten, that might win at next year's Cheltenham Festival, okay? So I'm going to go first, okay? But give you thinking time, because I haven't brought this up beforehand. I watched back to Supreme again last night, and Firefox was tremendously unlucky. He wouldn't have won, but he would have been right up the backside of the front two in the Supreme if Jack didn't find that trouble early in the home straight. And I think he will win next year's Arkham. I think he's a corking bet for next year's Arkham because I think when he goes over fences, he's going to be back, popped out in front. And I think that's the way to ride Firefox. And he's going to make a smash and chase us. So Firefox for next year's Arkham is my early tip for the 2025 Chatham Festival. Have you had enough thinking time, Graham? Well, he wasn't beaten, BJ, but I think it's hard to uh, knock Corbett's cross, isn't it? Uh, he absolutely bolted up, didn't he? he? Oh God. <laughs> the way that he came up the hill, oh, it was like watching an express train, wasn't it, go, go through that line. The rest of them were all toiling in behind him, and I don't know where they're planning to go next year, but you would have thought he's going to be a gold cup. Oh, he's going for gold, I'd for say. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So he's very, very exciting with next year in mind. For Corbett's okay. cross. So Corbett's cross for you, Rodders. Matty? I'm not sure he's going to be a festival winner in waiting, but I think the run of Twig was very good okay. in the Ultima behind Chianti Classico. He would have hated that ground. I'm surprised they didn't pull him out, really, because I've spoken to Ben Pauling quite a lot about this horse, and it's a great family story with, with Bo Morgan, and his mum owns the horse. Um, and all the way through, he sort of said, needs good ground, needs good ground, needs good ground. That didn't happen yesterday, and he's still run an absolute blinder behind a very, very, very good horse. Okay, we like that. A bit of from left field for Maddie. It is Twig who ran a corker in the Ultima. Paddy, you were frantically searching there. <laughs> I was looking, back, I was looking back over the results. I mean, I, I think like Corbett's Cross was, was the one I was going to say. It's, I, I thought it was so impressive. And uh, and the other one was uh, was Gaelic Warrior. Was so Because I didn't fancy Gaelic Warrior at all. But just you know, just looking there, absolutely hosed up. I'd kind of forgotten how easy a fire he won by in the end. So the two of them obviously be, be two to take out of it. In terms of the beaten horses... Um, I don't know, because behind those, I mean, you, you might be right about your one, but behind those, there was, like, daylight was second, wasn't it? Like, yeah, there was, there was no, there was no yeah. hard luck stories, yeah. really. Like, yeah. there was no horse said, oh, that should have won, yeah. you know? Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I don't it's know. It's a tough question. I it put you on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one man who didn't fancy Gaelic Warrior yesterday and said he was the, the lay of the day was Tom Nugent. He gets most things right, but you got that wrong. Very badly wrong. Yeah. Uh, very badly wrong. And I, I would never, I would never compliment Paul Townend to his face, but I'll do it behind his back. I thought uh, it was a, a, a master class of a ride, I thought. Uh, when, when Gaelic Warrior was headed, he could have, and most jockeys, nine out of ten jockeys, would have pressed go, and he could have done his mm. hanging job and, and a way out the side door. But uh, Before you but, give us the names of the people in those locations, one horse from yesterday that you'll be interested in for next year's festival? Uh, oh... Uh, can I give you two, maybe? Uh, I thought Irish Point ran... ran Make up for Paddy. Uh, Irish Point ran a lot better than a lot of people were expecting. He got close, I'd say, maybe uh, maybe a little bit further in trip, and he'd be very interesting uh, wherever he might go, either the entry hurdle or, or back here for the stairs next year. And I thought, uh, meeting of the waters, if you watch back to the Ultima, he ran a blinder uh, for if, if, if the English national is still on the agenda. I thought he ran a lovely race. But I've kind of gone outside the brief there, but anyway. Let's get uh, those names. We've got some names. Yes, Oliver in Brighton, Simon in Edinburgh, Jim in Belfast, Ben in Sunderland, uh, Ryan in Ballymoney, Andrea in Kilcullen, not Ruby, uh, Bridget in Dublin, Dennis in Cork, Liz in Limerick, and Natalie in Letterkenny. If you know any of those uh People with names in those locations, uh, they may well have five grand in their Paddy Power account and they've got just over four minutes to claim it. They have to log in, check if the money is there. If it is there, have a small bet or withdraw some of it. And they get to keep all the cash to get them up and running for day two of the Cheltenham Festival. But the clock is ticking. You find it, you keep it. Log into your Paddy Power account and you could have five grand. So that was yesterday. You want to find out what's going to happen today. And we're going to kick off, of course, with what is now... The Gallagher Novices Hurdle and Ballyburn, the banker for so many, is now 4-11 to 11 after Willie Mullins' brilliant performance yesterday with the treble. He's 4-11. to 11. Il Atlantique, a second favourite, 6-1. to 1. Predator's goal is 10-1. to 1. Handstands, can he do it for Ben Pauley? The unbeaten handstands is 12-1. to 1. And it is 16-1 to 1 bar. 
Okay, I don't know how we're going to do this, okay? Because I think we all agree that Ballyburn is probably going to win. Is there any chinks in his armour whatsoever, Manny Player? Well, Firefox beat him earlier on in the season, and apparently there were no excuses for that, although he was a big drifter on that day. Um, but listen, the hype has been huge all season. For me, obviously, I was trying to take him on because he's a short price favourite at the Cheltenham Festival. But then Slade Steele goes and wins the Supreme and you think, am I just overcomplicating something? And the answer is probably yes. So he's going to be hard to beat. I would have a look in the without market. OK. And who would you like in the without market? Uh, Predators Gold, I think. Uh, second in two grade ones. They said he didn't stay the trip last time over two miles, six and a half. Um, I think this will be his ideal distance. Uh, he's just a really genuine horse. I prefer him to Il Atlantique. I think Il Atlantique has looked a little soft in a couple of finishes. Um, and Predator's Gold, he's building on his runs all the time. Uh, decent RPR. And I think at the prices, he would potentially be the value. Okay, so he is the value. Paddy Power, I can't find anywhere, anybody, sorry, anywhere in this world, in any country, in any place, any person, anything, Anybody who doesn't fancy Ballyburn. It's astonishing. I've done a couple of preview nights like you have. And on every single preview night, the selection for this race or the Supreme at the time was Ballyburn. Not one person in this world doesn't fancy Ballyburn. I've never known this before. Look, there's one thing to remember about Slade Steel, and this is kind of clutching at straws a bit, but the last day uh, there was the hurdle was omitted on the, the home straight at Leopardstown. And I know Ballyburn fairly hammered him, but... But also Henry's horses have really, they really do peak at the, at the festival. You know, he really, he's, he's a master at getting them right uh, for this. So there's probably a bit more to come from Slade Steels. So he probably improved a bit from that run. I'm not saying Bally Byrne hasn't either, because Willie Mullins knows a thing or two about training festival winners as well. But uh, so, I mean, I just, you know, maybe we're getting a tiny bit carried away. But just to talk about Bally Byrne, there was last year, what was the one, the, the Oak won this race last year? The Willie Mullins, the Oak, um, yeah. Imperial Pass. Imperial Pass. Yeah. There was similar talk about him last year, just will not get beat type of thing, and turned out to be the truth. And I think this is very similar uh, hype, and it just seems to be he's like head and shoulders above everything else that Mullins has, and he has like whatever six runners today, and about five hundred runners in the first yesterday. Like he's got so many novices that actually it's a pretty good pecking order to be top of. Mm. So uh, yeah, I, mean, I think we're clutching at straws in the in the, the the without angle. <clears throat> I mean, just for an interest, maybe like handstands has done nothing wrong, so maybe just throw it in there. Handstands, yeah, unbeaten and was very good at Huntington last time. Handstands was. Uh, are you a Ballyburn fan? Now, you, you often try to, to get the most unbeatable horses beaten. You're, you're not. You know, please tell me you're not. Well, I so over the last few years, DJ, I've de I developed this this um, this saying that I just tell myself every festival, and it was, Mullins doesn't miss. And what it means is that when he's got one of these short price favourites... You know what it means. It says what it, <laughs> does what it says on the tin. Yeah, when he's got one of these short price favourites, they all win. You know, like when we saw it, uh, we saw it again yesterday, didn't we? Lossy Mouth and State Man and Gaelic Warrior, one after the other, in they go at short odds. But I forgot this statement this year and decided I was going to take on a few of the Mullins horses until yesterday, of course, and then suddenly that saying came back in my head, Mullins doesn't miss. And I thought... Ballyburn, if, if he thinks this is his best out there, he's got five in this race. Embarrassment of riches in the novice division. The British challenge is absolutely dire isn't it? in this race. Only three runners. One of them's the grey man who's about a thousand to one. And he so I just don't think Mullins is going to miss. I, I think that Ballyburn will win. It's a very difficult race to find an angle in outside of him because all of the big dangers are also trained by Mullins. So even if Mullins doesn't win it with Ballyburn, he still won't miss, will he? No, no, no. It is that straightforward. Tom Nugent, did we get a winner on Finders Keepers? No, no, no winners uh, this just time. Just that sort of day, isn't it? Just that sort of day. No, yeah. Nothing is going right, but look, <laughs> it, 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 there's uh, there's worse problems out there, so we'll uh, we'll line up the next drop in a few minutes to give ourselves some breathing room. Have your Paddy Power accounts at the ready, because we're going to do another drop across 10 accounts. Yeah, and if you did get up and you want, we're looking forward to the cross-country chase, and you decided to go back to bed, get back up again, and log in to your Paddy Power account, and you could have five grand. We're going to be doing... Our final drop in a couple of moments. Ballyburn, simple. How yeah. far does he win by, win by? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, sure, could be eight or ten. Could it be? Hmm. Could be. Yeah. 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 I think it'll be a long way. Yeah. Okay. So we're all we're all with Ballyburn. What I want now is the horse to finish second. To Ballyburn. Paddy Power. Stands. Predators Gold. Il Atlantic. <coughs> Mercury. Mercury. Yeah. Massive yeah. price. Yeah, he was impressive, wasn't he, when he won last time? Mm. Twenty-two lengths of it. it was a fairy ass, wasn't he? It? it was only a maiden <coughs> hurdle, but the time was okay. Mm. They say he's been working well. Yeah, vibes from the yard are very strong about Mercury. 
Tom Nugent, Joe Ballyburn. Uh, Ballyburn, Il Atlantique to finish second as well. Okay, we're on the same page, Tom. Yes. That was the Gallagher Novices hurdle. It will be another glimpse of the potentially hugely exciting Ballyburn. Moving on to the 210 is the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. And lo and behold, we've got a Willie Mullins train favourite this time. It is Factifile, who is a slightly more backable price, actually, at 4 to 5. Factifile with Paddy Power. Stay Away Faye is 130. Monty Star is next to the market at 5 to 1. 12 to 1 American Mike, who has, of course, beaten Factifile already this season. Sander Clegan is 22 to 1. And Gio Vinco is the outsider of the sextet at 25 to 1. Right, I'm going to start here, Rodders. I'm going to start here. I think Factifile will be beaten today. Why? I think Stay Away Faye is going to turn this into a proper test. I think it's going to get really ugly up the straight. And he's a proper street fighter. He's the one I want on my side. Cheek pieces on. Nichols in a three-mile novice chase around Chetlam. This is like this is huge for Paul Nichols. This race defines Paul Nichols' season. Yes, I know he's probably going to be champion trainer again. But he needs to get a big Chetlam Festival winner again in a grade one. I know he's st- stage start tomorrow. But this is the one... This is the one who could be running the Gold Cup next season. And I think in those conditions, with the cheek pieces on, he won the Albert Barton last year. He's not as sexy. Of course, he's not as factifile. But I think he might just do it. And I think 130 is decent value. Mullins doesn't miss, Lee <laughs> Factifile looked like a superstar, didn't he? Absolutely routed. Gaelic Warrior. Gaelic Warrior was out on his feet, wasn't he? Yeah, but hold on, on a off? second. Hold on a second. Did that not win the article on. yesterday, DJ? Yeah. Yeah. Gaelic Warrior won the article yesterday, but the Gaelic Warrior who won the article yesterday was not the Gaelic Warrior that ran at Leopardstown. They are two different horses. Why? So anybody pinning their their their, their claims for, for Factifile on Gaelic Warrior yesterday is wrong. But the time suggests that Factifile beat him senseless. You know, the time's solid for, for a match. Let's not forget that was a match. Yeah. It was a good time. Yeah, but Gaelic Warrior, you knew he was a different horse yesterday. I don't think he was. Okay. The Factifile was that good, he just beat him outside. Maybe, maybe. I could just see. I can see your point. I can see Stay Away Faye coming off that home turn, grinding away in front in the cheek pieces, and then you know, Mark Walsh turning up on Factor File, holding the bridle, and away goes Corbett's Cross like up the hill. Another Mullins winner, waving to the crowd. Mullins doesn't miss. Mullins doesn't miss, Manny Pear. <laughs> I think you might in this. Um, yeah, I'm with you. We don't often agree, do no, we? Never. I think. Never, no. <laughs> Maybe this is a bad sign. No, you told me you didn't like um, my blazer. <laughs> Uh, no, I like Stay Away Faye as well. Uh, I think Factifile, if he was mine, I would want to see him in the turners. I'm mm-hmm. half surprised they ran him in this race because I think he's quite quick. He's classy and he's got a turn of foot and I'd have run him in that race. Um, Stay Away Faye, you know, Albert Bartlett winner. That form's working out great. Um, has done very little wrong over fences. The cheap piece is okay. They're acknowledging that, you know, he might not have the pace of the other horse. But if you look at it, Factifile has been beaten by American Mike who you don't know what he's going to do, depending on what side the bet he gets out of. Then he's won one credible race, really, because the other one was a match. Now, I have no doubt that he's very classy. And again, there's a hell of a lot of hype around him, you know, future Gold Cup horse and all the rest of it. But ultimately, he's got to go out there and he's going to have a real test, I think. We've, we've spoken about the tactics and how Stay Away Faye is going to make this a real war of attrition. I don't think that would suit fact file. And if you're talking about prices, you've got four to five versus 100 to 30. I'll take the 100 to 30 every day of the week. Go for it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it is stay away Faye for myself and Maddie <clears throat> in the Brown Advisory. Paddy, there'll be a lot of people watching this morning and they'll be saying to themselves, OK, Ballyburn is 4 to 11. Yesterday we'd lost him out was long odds on. Statement was long odds on. Why is fact to file 4 to 5? Why is fact to file not 2 to 5? Because uh, Factorfile is based a, a good bit on, I mean, I understand there's that one performance that, that Graham is talking about, but uh, there's some good horses in here, like Stayaway Faye is obviously a proper horse. Monty Star is one I fancy, I think, a real proper horse for the future. And even Sandor Clagan, these are ones on softer ground, might, might just come into it if it mm-hmm. becomes that dire test, you know what I mean? They might just come into it. So I think that's, that's the reason why, is the factor file. there's a lot of hype around it. Like, I mean, Tony Mullins was saying about the preview night we did, like, dash, this horse would be galloping the shop in the Gold Cup or whatever, you know, and maybe it would. Like, we look at Corbett's Cross yesterday. I mean, that could happen. You could genuinely see that, but I, you're, you're paying. You're paying odds on to see that, you know what I mean, to, to get involved in that. So, Stay away um, if they would have beaten Corbett's Cross in the Albert Bartlett last year if he hadn't ran out of the last Well, one. there you go. So, that, so I, I think that... So I I think that it's a deeper race then. Like it, it could be very um, lazy to just say Mullins doesn't miss and just go stop there, stop looking after that, right? But the um, but I think this is a deeper race. Only six runners, but like there's probably like, you know, three four of them have a chance. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. And and we'll come to your you have a runner later on. Yeah. Uh, we'll come to that in a moment in the in the grand annual. The Henry de Bromhead stable yesterday. We saw Slade Steel. We seen his second, third, and fourth in the mayor's hurdle. Everything was running to the maximum of, the, of their potential yesterday. With Monty Starr, Henry is not a trainer that gives a whole lot away. But I just thought in the lead up to this race, every time I've asked about Monty Starr, he's been very, very keen and just saying how much he actually does really like this horse. Mm. Yeah, funny. I bumped into uh, to Mike Maloney in at, at the, at the airport on the way over. He's one of the owners. Um, himself and his brother uh, Barry, but uh, and he was just saying. I mean, he's just like I mean, he's an owner. Obviously, he fancies his horse, but like his eyes lit up when he's talking about it and just saying, "Oh, geez, Rachel loves it and lo- loves the way he jumps and everything." I'm just, you know, you're looking at it there, and he won over three miles on heavy ground at Punchdown last time. Didn't miss a twig. Like really jumped well the whole way. So ground should be fine. Trip should be fine. You know, and there is there has to be a small doubt about Factor Five getting the trip because he's so quick. Now, there's, mm-hmm. Obviously, the answer to that is he might just be that good mm-hmm. that he can go quicker course, than everyone. Yeah. We're going to find out today, aren't we? And that's the beauty of it. That's why he's four to five and not two to five. That is why <coughs> the file is four to five and not two to five. Tom, are you just keeping it simple? Mullins doesn't miss. Um, I think so. Yeah, I, 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 we're skirting around the fact that maybe how hard, how highly he's held in regard at home. Um, I think he was performing so well in his bumpers uh, in spite of him not being a bumper horse at all. Um, and they've obviously bypassed the, the the novice hurdle campaign to kind of fast track the whole project. Um, I would say he's going to turn into be a very top class open company chaser in time. And, 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 and as you said, Willie, from a very early stage, like for horse, obviously, Florida Pearl, we know went straight from bumpers to uh, chasing. But Willie, without even being like, we weren't even trying to tease it out of him. He, he, he openly said in the pre-season stable tour that he adores this horse. Mm-hmm. That this is the one he's really looking forward to in years to come. And when he kind of offers that information without it being kind of teased out of him, it speaks volumes, doesn't it? I think it does. And I think 4 to 5 could potentially look big um, this evening. It's 8 to 11 now. Stay away for 830 trips to 7 to 2 and uh, Factor File is now 8 to 11 from 4 to 5. Those are our selections as you can see on the screen. Myself and Maddie are staying loyal to Paul Nichols with Stay Away Fay. Currently he's 7 to 2 now. He's on the drift from 130. Uh, Rodders Mullins doesn't miss Factor File for him and Monty Star for Paddy Power. That is the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. And before we get stuck into the Coral Cup, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel on The Racing Post. Terrific content on there throughout the week. Plenty of little nuggets that you need to watch. So don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel on The Racing Post. So if you thought the first two races were really easy, we've got Ballyburn, we've got Factifile, we have a corking handicap. That is devilishly difficult to solve. And currently built by Ballymore, he's been the big plunge horse in the last 24 hours, is currently a 4-1 to shot. Sam Majest, will it be Willie Mullins chasing a hat-trick in this race after the first two races? Sam Majest is 9-2. to Langer Dan, last year's winner, is 13-2. to Bally Adam for Henry de Bromhead has been very well supported into 8-1, to having been as big as 16-1 to not so long ago. I know uh, a couple of shrewd judges are very keen on Bally Adam. Doddy the Great, who, who probably would have been favoured for this race if the Henderson stable were in good form, is next in the market. And we should say, Henderson has taken out a couple of horses today. He's taken out John Bond. He's taken out First Street out of this race. And he's taken out one other horse on the day at Kingston Street, I think, as well. So we don't yet know if Doddy the Great will definitely run. But Doddy the Great is drifting out to a back of a price here. And he is extremely interesting, isn't he? Yeah, he's always uh, I'm going to stick with here, DJ. I've had him in mind since he obviously finished fourth, didn't he, in the um, Betfair hurdle, which... The form is really good, isn't it? The the, the third go Dante and the fifth finished first and second, of course, in the Imperial Cup at Sandown on Saturday. And the time backs up that it was a really good race. For all that Iberico Lord disappointed yesterday, I think he was just one of those Henderson horses who's, who's got the bug. Uh, it is obviously a bit of a worry that Hendersons are running so poorly, aren't they, generally speaking? But Lucia did, of course, run a big career best when third in the champion hurdle yesterday. And like you've just said, he has taking out loads and loads of horses today and he's talking about potentially making on runners tomorrow and, and on so Friday as well. how can you back Duddy the Great? Well, why has he left Duddy the Great in there? You know, does he think that he is not affected by the bug for some reason? But well, we don't even know if there is a bug. Well... I think there, there must be something there, mustn't mm. there? I mean, I don't remember Nicky Henderson coming into a Cheltenham Festival and just having so much go go wrong. It's it's, it's an absolute disaster so far by, from his standards, isn't it? Not least with Constitution Hill not making it. But uh, you've also said there, and I think it's a good point, he would have been favourite for this race had 
the bug not come along. You're now looking at getting probably nearly double the price that you would have got without the bug. If he's not got the bug, it's all a load of nonsense, <coughs> isn't it? So I'm happy to take the chance. Double the price that you would have got before Doddy the Great. Let's hope that he's like Lucia and not affected by it. Yeah, we should say an alleged bug because <laughs> we don't actually know what it is. But Doddy the Great... So you're 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 keeping the faith. You're Keep hoping the Daddy Great turn Daddy the Great turns up in really good well being and is going to do. The well, he's definitely well handicapped because he's won, he's won over two mile five as well, hasn't he? And he's he's got really good form over two miles. So I think he's going to improve going up in trip as well. He's got loads of positives about him, Daddy the Great, apart from the alleged bug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll say alleged. Alleged, yeah, alleged. Okay, I'm sure there's bug. Yeah, okay. Daddy the Great for Graham Rodway. He's sticking to his guns, Matty Plale. This is now this is your type of race. You're you're one of the up and coming judges in the racing post. <laughs> and you have made Don't your laugh name. So loud, Paddy. The re, the re, all right, Paddy. <laughs> I thought it was been in some she's up and coming. She's already there. Oh sorry, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, saved, but, yeah. But saved. I, was, I was going on age, you know. Okay. Our, our future okay. is ahead yeah. of her, Paddy. Uh, and one of the reasons you're sitting on this very couch, this cozy, comfortable couch, it is, is because you have been able to solve races like this time and time <laughs> again. So no pressure. I've built you up now. Give us the winner. I have a sneaky one, but before I do, I want to talk about G-Rod's theory in that Lucky Place was the one that I was really interested in. And obviously he's also trained by Nicky Henderson. And it's a question of every horse has its price, right? I mean, they will drift out to a price that is attractive. Um, that's just a fact. So I'd definitely be keeping an eye on him and see what, what price he goes. Um, got great form behind the likes of Golden Ace, tell of a name, disappointing yesterday. But I think he's a good grand horse. Gidley Park. Um, and Nicky Henderson is the leading trainer in this race with mm. four wins. But the one I like, um, who's a bit of a crazy one. I'm not sure what price he is now. He's never going to get it onto that graphic. Um, I think I took 50s a few days ago. Whoa, here we go. Um, Black Bamboo. Black Bamboo. Very John unexposed. Murphy. Yeah, I this horse went into my tracker after the Dublin Racing Festival. I thought he had absolutely no chance of getting either into this race or into the Martin Pipe. And it's just so happened that he has got in. Um, look, he needs to improve. That's there for all to see. But I think he will. Um, he's beat one of the decent Potemps runners, Alpesh Amin, in a bumper. He's not a bumper horse. He was a running on five length third to high class hero at Galway. That could look really good form. And if you watch that Dublin Racing Festival 6 last time, that was over three miles. He was really unlucky in the run. Um, the hood was on that day. It's now off. I think two mile five, strong pace, competitive handicap at this track is really going to see lots of improvement. He was also pretty eye-catching over two miles the run before. He's not a two-miler. He's not a three-miler. This is his trip. Uh, he was, represents quite a shrewd team, and I was sort of... Putting it out there in the press room yesterday, Black Bamboo, you know, has he, has he got no chance? And everyone seemed to not quite put me off. So, yeah, what price? I'm not sure. 33 but. to 1, Black Bamboo from Addy Plail. Yeah, we're giving it there a go. There we go. <laughs> we're giving it a go. We're bigging you up. Black Bamboo from Maddie Plail. And for an extra bonus point, Maddie. Now, if you get this, I'll be extremely impressed, okay? okay. Black Bamboo is trained by John Murphy. Yep. John Murphy trained a champion tr chase winner once upon a <clears> time. <throat> what was his name? New Mill. There we go. She's got the double up. Well done. <laughs> Paddy, what wins the Carl Cup? Uh, well, Maddie went for one end of the handicap. I'm going for the other. I'm going for Bally Adam. I know you, you picked it up at the start because it was well tipped Very up. Well I just backed, think, yeah. you know, obviously open race handicap, giving away top weight, but just as all the runs at, at the festival have been good, and this step up and trip, I think, is, is, is finished fifth in the last two county hurdles, I think. Mm. And this step up and trip should suit, has been running over further and uh, ran really well in the Supreme previous to those. So I think, yeah, Bally Adam, course for him. You know, a bit of a Henry Henry love in for me today, but yes. uh, but yeah, I think uh, Bally Adam could could definitely get involved again. Would you believe one of my strongest fancies of the day is in this race? Oh God! And it's twenty to one. I'm very keen on Sham Bally Kid for Gigginstown, Willie Mullins, ah, and Michael O'Sullivan. Michael O'Sullivan. He was initially jocked up on Black Bamboo, and I was rubbing my hands together. But mm. I've not got a bad replacement in Sean Flanagan. No, absolutely not. I think with Sham Bally Kid, he was really strongly fancied for a three mile race at the Dublin Racing Festival. Everything went wrong in the race. He made mistakes at crucial stages. And still turning for home, I thought he had a chance. And I don't think he fully sees out three miles. I think two mile five is perfect for him. And he's a, he's a horse we definitely haven't seen the ceiling of his ability. You know, he beat Monty Starr in a maiden hurdle uh, last season. He's got loads of ability. And I think off mark of 134 at 20 to 1, I think Sham Valley Kid is very interesting. Tom Nugent, Carl Cup. Carl Cup, uh, Paddy, we shared a car out together and he talked me into Bally Adam, so I'm, I'm with him, I think, yeah. 
I actually stole his tip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was so hoping you'd come to me before him. <laughs> so it's Bally Adam for the two yeah. gents at eight. So it looks like the perfect trip for Bally Adam because yeah. he obviously ran really well against Irish Point over three miles uh, in that race at Christmas. So there we go. Those are our selections. It is Sham Valley Kid for me. It's Black Bamboo for Maddie. It's, it's Dolly the Great for Graham Rodway. And it's Bally Adam for our two Paddy Power Buckos. Paddy Power himself. And Tom Nugent. And before we get stuck in to the champion chase, and Rodders tells us again why Edward Stone is going to win, we've got another drop. We do indeed. Uh, the clock is already running there because we were, we were, we were wondering where we get, we're going to get a word in edgeways. But there's uh, another 50 grand dropped in across uh, a couple uh, of Paddy Power accounts. We'll be re revealing uh, names and locations across the next 13 minutes or so as the timer runs down. But there is cash in there. Uh, if there's a few quid in your account that you didn't think was there before, all you have to do is log in, uh, find it, withdraw it, or have a small bet, and it is yours to claim. So that's why your Keepers will be back to reveal more shortly. Let's hope we have a couple of winners as well. We need to get a winner today to, to get a bit of a good feeling going for Wednesday at the Cheltenham Festival. So, before we get stuck into the champion chase, let's hear what Brian Cooper had to say about his career. I had surgery there, four-hour surgery in Gloucester. And then the next day, I was rushed to Bristol. And that was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. And I was tough. I was there for 10 days. Um, had a nine-hour surgery. Um, had like a going down, I had to sign this form before I went down to say, look, there's 50-50 chance here. You might come back up with no leg. And I remember when the doctor said that to me, and I was like, oh, my God. Of course you want free bets. Of course you do. Go on to racingpost.com forward slash free bets. And you will see some very nice free bets there. So log on and you will get your free bets. Uh, Paddy, just a, a word on that uh, Cheltenham Re Rewind show. Uh, it's on the Paddy Power uh, YouTube channel. It's a terrific watch. And I just thought, listening to Brian Cooper, it was almost harrowing listening to it. And that day when he got that injury, like, you'd wonder, like, how on earth could he even dream of getting back on a horse? And to win all the race he did afterwards, like, it's, it must have taken immense mental strength for him to get back. And jockeys are mad, aren't they? I mean, but like, yeah. it, it, it's, 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 I'm just sitting there, like, just like, mouth open, nearly listening to himself and Ruby, like, uh, swap war stories about which hospital did you go to? Oh, right, no, I went to the other one. Like, there's all this, <laughs> all this, 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 this parallel universe life that we know. I remember I had an issue once with the, uh, with the, uh, with my neck, and I remember ringing Ruby to ask the name of a specialist. And he was going, Oh, no, no, he's the knee. No, 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 he's the hip. No, he's the foot. Like, he had all these, this list of specialists <laughs> yeah. that, that he'd go to. But, uh, but yeah, Brian Cooper was, it was such an interesting day because, uh, he's so honest. Like it's so honest, and it's just you can really you really feel for him, and you can really you, you kind of you almost live live through it with him while he tells you the story. You can really see it because he's, he's a kid. And he's like he's sitting there now. He's he's obviously a, a older now, but at the time, like we, we we forget about the pressure of 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 that the jockeys go through, especially like if they're having issues with mental health and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it was just it was so honest of him. I thought it was a, a really really enjoyable afternoon for me. And uh, we went for loads of pints after, which was deadly as well. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was great fun. Yeah, a double whammy. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's looking at Brian, he just looks happy. He looks yeah, content. Totally, totally, yeah. You know what I mean? So fair play to Brian. You can watch that excellent Cheltenham re Rewind show on Paddy Power's YouTube channel. And we're going to get to the champion chase, but I know there's a lot of concern about Sergino. A lot of you probably have Sergino in a lot of anti-post bets. He has been declared for the Triumph Hurdle, so, so the dream is still alive at the moment for Sergino. I know there was a lot of talk of him not being declared, but he has been declared. Sergino, we've got some names and locations. And we have a winner, DJ. Uh, Johnny in Dungarvan, congratulations. You've bagged yourself a nice few quid. Uh, if you know of a Shane in Wexford, Elaine in London, Charlene in Newcastle, Megan in Clacton on Sea, uh, Corin in London, Lynn in Liverpool, Emma in Stourbridge, Osmond in Tralee, or Keith in Kilkenny. Uh, make sure you're uh, logging in to your Paddy Power account. There's a few quid in there for Finders Keepers. You've got just over nine minutes left to claim it. If you don't claim it, it's gone. And just to mention as well, DJ, on the first drop, no winners, of course, but Paddy Power left 500 quid behind in each of the accounts just to say thanks, but hard luck. The there we go. So that's five winners who have won five grand this week. 
uh, thanks to our Finders Keepers competition. You find it, you keep it. If that's your name, if that's where you live, you got to log in to your Paddy Power account. Now it's time for the feature on day two of the Cheltenham Festival. It is the Queen Mother Champion Chase. And of course, the big breaking news this morning is that John Bon will not be running against El Fabiolo. And that means El Fabiolo, last year's Arkle winner, is one to three. Edward Stone is next in the market at six to one. It's seven to one, Captain Guinness. Alexia de Nuts is 22 to one. Then you're into Gentleman, the me at 33 to one, 66 to one. Uh, Booth Hill and Funnambole Savola is your 100 to 1 outsider of the field. So, Graham Rodway, we did, you did kind of tease us in at the start of the show, telling us that Edward Stone would beat El Fabiolo. It's now 10 past nine. You've had 40 minutes to think about it. Have you, have you managed to find some sense? Well, I have spent 20 minutes saying Mullins doesn't miss, of course, as well. Which yeah, is so there could be a bit of a contradiction <laughs> coming. Yeah, it's getting into my head now, but... Um, yeah, I just think that, that this is this is a golden opportunity for Edward Stone. Like last season, he was the outstanding two mile champion chaser, didn't yet. he? I have to stop yet. We have another winner. Oh, so yeah, sorry, you were mid flow there. I know, yeah. Shane and Wexford. Excellent. He's uh, he's he's nabbed another five grand. So we've got two winners in our second drop. Uh, if you know Elaine in London, uh, Charlene in Newcastle, Megan in Clacton on Sea, Karen in London, Lynn in Liverpool, Emma in Sturbridge, Osman in Tralee, or Keith in Kilkenny, you've got just over seven minutes left. Congratulations to Shane in Wexford and Johnny in Dungarvan, who have already bagged the finders keepers in our second drop. Excellent. Six winners for the week. It's going well. well I stopped your mid-flow. Continue. Yeah, I was telling you how Edward Stone was the best two-mile chaser last season, wasn't I? And how he came into the, the champion chase and we thought, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I know what you mean, was pretty average, wasn't he, until he, he absolutely hacked up in the champion chase last year. Edward Stone was 15-8 to eight to win that race. He was beating 64 lengths. Clearly wasn't right, was he, that day? And I just wonder if maybe at the start of the season, Alan King thought, hmm, we had a few hard races going in there, didn't we? We had that one against the detergent sheet, was it, I think was the horse, where he, he, he saw... And he, says, yeah. yeah, and he had a he, he put up a big performance at Sandown where he fresh called Specialist Green Team well like nine and a half lengths, which is his best run. I just wonder if the start of the season King thought mm, maybe we'll take a different approach this time, build him up a little bit slower. Because he certainly was very weak in the market when he turned up against John Bomb here first time out in the on the old course, wasn't he? And he, he John Bomb thrashed him. He did get a little bit closer to John Bomb next time when he was a bit stronger in the market, suggesting he was probably a bit closer to his peak. Yes. They had that failed experiment over two and a half. But I wonder if that actually did them a favour because he went off. He was too keen, wasn't he? Mm. And they thought, oh, well, he's too keen here. If we go and blast him over two miles, which is exactly what they did at Newbury, maybe we'll get some results. He was absolutely superb. One by 40 lengths. It was his second best performance uh, behind that one at Sandown when he, when he fresh green team. And this year, unlike last year, when he was coming in off the back of a defeat, he's coming in this year on nearly a peak performance. He's, he's right at his peak at the right time. And I think if there's a way that you can get El Fabiolo beat, it's to really get him at it early, get that, that, that questionable jump in. I mean, Nico de Voinville's been talking about it, hasn't he, on racing post channels at times. He was saying, oh, we might be able to just find a little bit of a chink in El Fabiolo's jumping. The acid test comes today for El Fabiolo, and I don't think he's going to pass it, DJ. He's your banker of the meeting. My banker of the week, Edward Stone. You heard him. You heard him. His banker of the week is Edward Stone. <laughs> no, no temperature. Okay. He hasn't convinced me, but it was a good attempt. I have to I say, tried. in fairness, like, like that was that was <laughs> that was Rodders in full flow. That was Edward Stone over the first four feds today. So very well done. Even if it loses, you've made a compelling case. So well done. Thank you. If I get beat by Captain Guinness, I think I'll give up the game. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, That's a big claim. He doesn't stay, does he? That's the worry about him, isn't it? Like Edward Stone's going to go off really fast, going to make it a test. Edward Stone stays make it on this ground. Captain Guinness, fast horse. Will he stay, DJ Captain Guinness? Uh, he's not a strong stayer, but I think he could, he could potentially finish second, I think. But uh, hopefully what, not. Edward Stone? Yeah, behind Edward Stone. So he hasn't convinced me. I think El Fabiolo is just a different class today. So what do you think, Manny? I mean, the betting will tell you that the likelihood is El Fabiolo is going to win, but I am actually with G-Rod. Um, oh, holy yes, God. Maddie, I, you think, like it. I think Edward the world has gone mad. is worth a go. It's annoying that John Bond's a non-runner now and we don't have each way betting down to three places, but a reminder of some of the, the short price favourites to be beaten in this race in the last couple of years. Shishkin at 5-6, to six, Chacun Poissois 8-13, to 13, uh, Defi de Soy at 2-5, to five, Duvan at 2-9, to nine, Under So at 4-6, to six, and Sprinter Sacra at 9-4. to four. Wow. That is some good stats, Maddie. You think there could be another hop-up beaten today? 
I mean, he's got the ability to win this doing handstands, has Niel Fabiolo, but I'm a firm believer in his jumping frailties. I think he sometimes he just doesn't make a great shape over a fence. The trouble is he can just bulldoze through them and he's just too classy. But with the tactics here, if Edward Stone goes off as he did in the game spirit, that was an RPR of 170. El Fabiola can do that in his sleep. But that's going to put pressure on his jumping. We know that Edward Stone stays this trip very well. At his best, he's a really top-class two-miler. And I just think at the prices, I would much rather take a chance because we know that upsets happen in this race. Paddy, will you talk some sense well, into the people either <laughs> side of me? Well, listen, the, I think it's it's kind of funny uh, that we're saying El Fabiola's jumper and all that kind of stuff. Like his form is one 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 one. I think he's a great jumper with, with little, little 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 dot. That means infinity, doesn't it? Yeah, dot yeah, yeah. One, does. Or recurring or whatever. But uh, uh, but I'm like I'm the same. <laughs> I'm thinking Edward Stone has a sweet. Oh my god! I just, <laughs> yeah, I just. I don't know. I love this race, and I love the idea of Edward Stone just going out there. This is the it's a great. It's obviously the sprint race over fences, like, and it's just just going like hell for leather. Like literally, it's all on the line. Uh, Tom Cannon's going to have to just tr get the, the fractions right or whatever. Just you can't miss a twig, right? And you're just going to go for it. I mean, it must be um, such a thrill to be able to ride that race and just go mm -hmm. for every single one, every single jump. Just go for it. And you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Like, I mean, I think Edward Stone's probably winner bust, isn't he? I mean, he could set it up for El Fabiola, of course he could. Like, it could be a tear away, and then El Fabiola could just be hacking behind. But uh, I think Edward Stone might just get, in, get get up that hill, yeah. I think Edward Stone might work. Might okay, work. so unbelievably, uh, it's not a comedy show. Uh, and we're actually trying to find winners here on Good Morning Cheltenham, but we have three votes for Edward Stone. Tom Nugent, don't do it to me. I can't. I can't take any more. No, just just for your own peace of mind, DJ, I'll go with you. I'll go with El, El Fabiola. I think sometimes, uh, and, and, and it is a pitfall, uh, at, a, at a big meeting, big festival, we're all here to talk about racing, and there's a lot of short price favourites, and you you try and convince yourself to come up with an angle, but maybe sometimes it's as straightforward as it looks, and mm. I think this is going to be straightforward. That treble DJ is uh, it's it working out a, a few minutes ago, just about six to four. Like the double was about six to four yesterday, so yeah. it's an extra leg. Yeah, the same reward today. So it's it's Ballyburn Factifile Fabio Fabiola's working yeah. at six to four Paddy Burn. And it's like obviously Factifile is the is the, is making the price for you. Mm. you know? mm. Okay, Oaks, there we go. Look at the screen in front of you there. We have three votes for Edward Stone. Maddie Rodders and Paddy Perra with Edward Stone. And I think El Fabiolo is just different class. To him, we've got a minute and 30 seconds left, Tom. Yeah, still a bit of time to claim uh, your few quid in uh, Finders Keeper. So if you're Elaine in London, Charlene <coughs> in Newcastle, Megan in Clacton on Sea, Corin in London, Lynn in Liverpool, Emma in Stourbridge, Osmond in Tralee, or indeed Keith in Kilkenig, uh, all you have to do is log into your Paddy Power account. There's a few quid in there, and you have uh, just over 60 seconds to w claim it, withdraw it, or have a small bet, and it's yours to keep. If you don't get it but by the time the clock runs down, Tis gone. Tis gone. So log in to your accounts right this second. If you have just joined us and you've just woken up, thanks. Thanks for joining us. But the breaking news this morning is that there is no cross country today and there's no cross country tomorrow or on Friday. It's off, unfortunately. No cross country chase at this year's Cheltenham Festival. So it means the penultimate race on the card is the Grand Annual. And Liberty Hunter is currently our 4 to 1 favourite. Our great friend of the show, Paul Keeley. What a legend that man is. This is his banker of the week. He can't say a sentence without the words Liberty Hunter in it. Currently four to one shot, shot. He started that plunge two months ago on Liberty Hunter at big double figure prices. He's now four to one favourite. And Madara is next to the market at five to one. Saint-Trois, is it a big plot for JP and Willie Mullins at 13 to two? It's 15 to two about Safferwear for Gordon Elliott. They with so many horses run well yesterday, but just didn't get one home in front. Safferer is a 15 to two shot. 17 to two last year's winner, Mascada. It is nine to one bar. Paddy, we'll start with you here because it's a big day for the power household. The folks, Tiara, who's been a terrific horse to own over the years because runs at Christmas at Leopardstown, Dublin Racing Festival, now the Cheltenham Festival. What can you tell us about the folks, Tiara? Uh, I can tell you that if we get a massive heat wave between now and what time is it, 4.50, um, we'll have a well, strange things have happened strange today have because happened. the panel has tipped Edward Stone, <laughs> yeah, so we could get Barbados like temperatures. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the ground is gone on us to be honest. Now, like he'll run, he'll, 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 he'll run well. I think he's well handicapped. I think it, I would, would have uh, fancied him at a massive price actually because the last day he won on um, Boxing Day, St Stephen's Day at Leopardstown, the mm. ground was good and then it went soft. Then after the next day, last rain or whatever, and then he, at the Dublin Racing Festival, he got well stuffed by Madara. 
uh, but that was the ground. Like Rachel came back and said he absolutely hated the ground. So I, I, I figure it's going to be more of the same today. But he's here. We'll run and we'll have a go. And you know, you never know. Might nick a plate or something like that. And uh, and look, there's a big gap between now and Aintree and then Punches Town and everything like that. So like you're right. It's it's like it's a dream to have a horse that can bring it to festivals. You know. And so, like, if it's not today, hopefully it'll be Aintree or, or Punches Town or whatever. And my friend and your friend Johnny Deneen, who was on the show earlier this week, he's really keen on Pat the Roo in this race. Yeah. Pateroo was upsides. Well, you were just in front at Christmas when Pateroo fell at the last. So if you're fancying Pateroo, you've got to give the folks the hour yeah. some sort of chance if the ground doesn't obviously hinder. Yeah, exactly. And it, again, that's, that's, the, that's the truth. Like, I was talking to Henry this morning about it and uh, and the conversation started with, uh, do you still want to run? <laughs> you know what I mean? so it's probably not a great message, but uh, but like to be honest, he's just said, look, we'll, t- we'll take our chances and like, you know, hopefully, who knows, you just, if this is Cheltenham, you know, you wouldn't know what might happen if the horse is going, if the horse might just re- might just relish it today, but it, generally we, we think the ground is too soft for him. And if you didn't have a runner in this race, what would you be backing? Uh, so I think um, the, the Gordon Elliott horse, Safur- Safurur, Safurur? Yeah, it's good, good uh, effort, yeah. Yeah, is, um, is, is one that just, it's kind of, it's, it's hardly snuck in at the bottom weight or anything like that, but it's one that's kind of the, probably a big handicap like, like this in mind like like the rest of them uh, for quite a while but uh, and I think his as you said his horses are were going pretty well yesterday it seems to have, have kind of finding their finding their feet a bit so I think Sefer could be could be well in here off 11-3 I think we'll have a, be, have a decent chance yeah okay there we go Safarer but uh, Paddy is hoping it's going to be a big day for the folks Yara again and the very best luck Paddy we'll be cheering you on Maddie you've uh, solved the Carl Cup riddle well done with Black Bamboo a nice 33 to 1 winner for you uh, another uh, tricky puzzle to solve what have you come down on here it is I love this race I think it's going to be one of the most enjoyable races of the day actually I've fancied so many different horses in it uh, Liberty Hunter but I'm not going to back him at 4 to 1 the old rogue Harper's Brook I was talking about him sort of straight after he won at Ascot because he was off the same mark as Global Citizen. He won this race for Ben Pauling and the Megsons. Um, but again, he's been well touted on the previous circuit and well back. So it's one of those races that I've looked at afresh and I've come up with something. And that something is Hardy to Soy um, for Jamie Snowden. Now, Jamie is not a trainer to be incredibly um, bullish. confident or mm-hmm. bullish. No, he, I mean, he has quiet confidence, but it's not often he'll come out and say, we think this horse has got a great chance. Um, and he's got really interesting profile. An RPR, best RPR of 142 um, when running in chases. He's running off 132 here. Really good run at Sandown last time behind Etalon, who would have been really interesting mm. if he turned up in this race. Um, he's got good handicap hurdle form, uh, beat the likes of Isio and Jello. Um, and Jamie basically said, we've laid him out for this. This has been the plan all year, he absolutely loves soft ground, loves an uphill finish. Um, I think they've put the cheek pieces back on for the first time over fences. Just looks like everything is put in place for him to run a huge race. Nine to one, I'd like a bigger price, but you can't have everything. Beautiful case. Well made 14s into nines uh, in the last couple of hours for Hardy Desai. Uh, in the Grand Annual for Maddie Playle. Rodders, what do you like in the Grand Annual? I've got a wild one for you here, DJ. Wilder than Edward Stone? Wilder than Edward Stone, yeah. 40 to 1 at the moment with Paddy oh, Powell. Jesus, here we go. <laughs> what else have you come up with now? Gemma Rand. Okay. Yeah, for okay. Venetia Williams. Okay, go on. Been running over two and a half, but did really well last season. Had some really solid form and ran a really big race at the track behind Caribbean Boy in April. The time figure was really solid for that. Right, and he's missed loads of time. But she got him out in the race that he ran in last season behind the big bite at Newbury only 11 days ago. And he shaped quite well, I thought. He travelled nicely through the race, and he just faded as though he was desperately in need of a run, right? Now they're dropping back to two miles. I think they've strongly run two miles on soft ground, Venetia Williams-type uh, conditions, aren't they? Might just suit Gemma around here, and I could see him running into a place at the very least. And who knows, he might even win. Gemma around a 40-1 to 1 for Graham Rodway, for Charlie Deutsch and Venetia Williams. Best of luck. Thank you. Uh, Tom? Um, roll the dice here. Paddy was a, a sufferer. was another one Paddy talked me into in the taxi. So How long was, was this taxi journey? Uh, I was, was it, it, the, the traffic was horrific. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but the one I'm going to roll the dice is an unexpected party for the skeletons. This could be a big plot. Um, won a listed race in Chepstow back in October and hasn't been up to much since. Uh, mm. I went up to 146, back to 141. Just thought it was interesting. And Dan Skelton has said over and over again that this horse does not fully see a two and a half miles. Yeah. So you just wonder, it's creeping down the handicap, tumbling down the handicap, actually. Is this his trip, I wonder? Is there a bit of one man about him? 
I think so. I think I think I think he'd be very interesting. I think he he'll give you a, he'll give you a run for your money at double figures anyway, definitely. Okay, there we go. Unexpected party. I give a big chance to as well. But Paul Keely, I've spent a week with him, and he has convinced me that this is going to be Liberty Hunters Day, and he's now a four to one shot. It might look really skimpy, trained by Evan Williams, ridden by a master, but I think four to one is actually the right price. I think Liberty Hunter is going to take the world of beating. It's hardly to say for Maddie playing. It is Gerrand at forty to one for Graham Rodway, and it's Safferware for Paddy Power in the Grand Annual and the sixth and final race on Wednesday. It is the Weatherby's Champion Bumper. Always an intriguing event. And currently, Jasmine DeVoe is your 9-2 to favourite. Jalon Didares is 5-1. to one. The choice of Jack Kennedy from the Willie Mullins trio, as Jasmine DeVoe is from the Clyde Sutton camp of 9 for Patrick Mullins. The Yellow Clay is 7-1. to one. It is 8-1 to one Cantico. It is 10-1 to one You Ought to Know. 12-1 to one Tishan. And 14-1 to one Bar. Are you a bumper fan, Paddy? Uh, I am. This year it's 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 tricky though because like there doesn't seem to have been that many outstanding performances, and there's a lot of talk about you know nobody was sure about who he was Willie Mullins' best bumper horse and all that. And I kind of feel like with having done zero analysis in this, I feel like Gordon Elliott have been better in bumpers this year than Willie. And I'm not sure. Well, actually, I have the stats on that, Paddy. No, I don't. I don't. Okay, Okay, yeah. So definitely Gordon Elliott has been better. Okay, if I say with confidence, it's true, right? But um, uh, it just feels that way that it's not the strongest year for Willie Mullins. Now, he has a million runners in here. And in fact, there's there's hardly any English-trained runners in the race, which is a bit of a joke, really, isn't it? Like, Mm. you think they'd throw a few darts, like, Mm. especially when some of the Irish haven't looked as good this year but um, so I think I think Jalon Dudery probably is the best of the Irish because Jack Kennedy picked it I mean he's done nothing wrong with three wins on, a, on his name but the one I'm going to go for just to have a swing at it because I think it's not a vintage bump, uh, bunch of Irish bumper horses is Six Mile Bridge for Ben, Co- ben Pauling um, because uh, he won well at Sandown it wasn't a huge performance but apparently wasn't fully fit and it will be much better than that Ben Pauling seems to have a pretty decent bunch of bumper horses uh, this year and this is obviously the best of them so I think at a big price have a swing and uh, but not not strong at all and you're not on your own Paddy because our flagship tipster Mr Tom Siegel in his price wise column in the race and post in his anti post price wise column he tipped up six mile bridge at 33 to 1 because I didn't see him in the taxi earlier Tom did you not know <laughs> <laughs> there we go six mile bridge for Paddy Power it could be a British winner the bumper Quiz question for y'all. The last British trained winner of the Weather Beast Champion bumper was? Moonraker? No, wrong, wrong. I'm going to take you. Wrong. Go on. Bally Andy. Bally Andy was the last British trained winner of the Champion bumper. But Paddy Power thinks it's going to happen in 2024. Maddie, what wins the bumper? The Yellow Clay, I think. Um, keeping it somewhat straightforward, which I don't tend to do. Uh, best form, arguably, in the race, uh, the best race as a guide is um, the bumper won by Jerobo Mashin um, at the DRF. And watching that back for Yellow K- Clay massively caught the eye in fourth. I think he can reverse that form with you all to know. Um, not worried that Jack Kennedy's not chosen him. I don't think there's going to be an awful lot between any of these. I think it's a big guess up of a race. Um, I can see the angle for Six Mile Bridge. I think Bill Joyce looked quite good um, on what he's done That already. has a chance, Bill yeah. Joyce. That has a big chance, yeah. So we'll see what price he is um, and whether I've won much money during the day. <laughs> I'm fancy reinvesting in Bill Joyce. But yeah, I think... For me, if I had to pick the yellow clay, but it's it's a race that I don't have a terribly strong opinion on. Okay, it's the yellow clay from Ali Clay. Rodders? I don't really know. It's a difficult race, isn't it, DJ? Um, I came down on Ken Tico, which is the one that Paul Townend is riding, and Willie Mullins is. Obviously, is it Patrick gets the choice in this race? Is traditionally the, the, the So maybe I'm on the wrong one, and maybe, Paul, maybe Paul's on the wrong one. Well, I don't know. He probably doesn't even know. Um, it, it won a race last time at one of my favourite tracks, your local one. Oh, here we go. What's it called? Navan. <laughs> Narvan, as, as, as you like to call it, DJ. The um, coldest place in Ireland. <laughs> the coldest place in Ireland. Where? Navan. Go right yeah, Navan, G- exactly. I don't know where he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Navan. Um, <laughs> Navan. Okay. Um, it, it was a good time. It was a solid time. It was heavy ground. Um, and it was a big step up on his previous debut first time, which I like to see. You know, maybe the horse is improving. It's a guessing game, this one, isn't it? The bumper. A real guessing game. But um, let's hope I've guessed right. OK, there we go. Cantico for Rodders because of his run at Narvan. Uh, Tom? 
uh, two at prices, DJ. A bit like Paddy, I kind of just hard to find a star, and you're kind of trying to separate the wheat free wheat from the chaff a little bit. But uh, uh, two of Willie's at prices that I thought might be interesting. Argento boy is one. Mm. Uh, he's a half brother to Briar Hill. Uh, by a good siren jukebox jury. I'd say he caught them off guard when he won as well as he did. Um, and that seems to be a theme with the jukebox juries. Maybe their homework is average and they come to the track and they get the job done. I think Brian Hayes uh, is in for a very good spin on Argento Boy. And the other one is uh, Seta Chance, who was second to uh, Barry Connell's good bumper horse, William William Money, Money, yeah. who's Frank the Form. Just thought at a price in around 25 to 1 could give you a squeak for your money there. So two at prices in the bumper. Excellent. And on our gentle boy, I was working that day at Fairy House. And like that big raw individual, I think they thought, oh, he'll come on a ton for the run. Because even David Casey was there that day and he said, whatever he does today, you'll see a different horse down the line. So interesting. Our gentle boy could be very interesting. I'm with Jalan Dadar is. I think he's the best bumper horse in Ireland. I thought the way he stuck his neck out and really wanted to beat Redemption Day at Christmas, was the best bumper performance I've seen this season. So I am with Jalan the Dares, and those are your six races at Cheltenham on Wednesday, previewed, and all that's left to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is reveal our charity bets. And we did make some money for our charities yesterday, thanks to Corbus Cross, who did the business in the National Hunt Chase. Uh, Maddie. You're going for Hardy Desai. Yeah, initially I was Coco Beach, but the cross country is not happening, so that scuppered me a bit. Obviously, um, Hardy Desai. Yeah, I think he's been laid out for the race. He's definitely on a good mark. We'll love the ground conditions, and I think he's value at nine to one. Nice glow on your face in that picture there, Paddy. Nice profile pic. I was going to say I look great in there. I look much better than I look today. Yeah, 1994. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I, probably, I probably wasn't quite as long over, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. Monty Star said it earlier. I mean, obviously, Factor File could just be better and could go and win, but I think it's a deeper race than that. I think Monty Star is it's and it's not sneaky form but it's a slightly different type of form line going into the race and I just think everything's in his favour so and me and my four chins in that picture are going for uh, Jalan Didares uh, what are you, you're you're uh, you're going to do it aren't you yeah, yeah Edward Stone for me Mullins does miss very best of luck with Edward Thank Stone you. very best of luck and Tom you're not on the screen but we'll give you a charity oh, thanks very much uh, unexpected party in the ground then you're oh nice sneaky one unexpected party around about 16 to 1 for Tom Nugent that is it that is Good Morning Cheltenham for day 2 of the Cheltenham Festival my thanks to Paddy Power to Maddie Playle to Graham Rodway and to Tom Nugent I've been David Jennings and thanks for watching best of luck enjoy your day <laughs>